would kick off things. Okay. Whoops. Okay, can everyone see the screen okay there? Yep. Okay. So thank you, Stephen, for the introduction and thank you for inviting me to present today. And uh, for everyone that's joined, thank you for taking the time. And I hope that this will be interesting for you. Um, we, we can do questions and answers at the end. So um, if, you, if there's anything that you, you want to ask, we'll do that at the end of the presentation. So Daikin, not necessarily a household name to one and all. So I just wanted to give you a bit of background about the company. So it's a Japanese company. We will be the leading manufacturer of air conditioning and air to water heat pumps and technology generally for purifying air, cooling air, heating air, um, as well as ventilation products, refrigeration products, and so on. So the company was originally established in 1924 in Japan, and the technology ranges from equipment that can operate from an outside temperature of minus 45 degrees and can be built to suit any size building. So huge commercial buildings, manufacturing plants, down to your residential home. So a huge, a huge range in between. Daikin is working towards um, net zero uh, CO2 emissions by 2050, employ 86,000 people approximately around the world and are represented in 150 countries worldwide. So absolutely enormous. So one important factor is that all of the technology that we sell in Europe is manufactured in Europe. And this is really important because other, I suppose, in, in the time that we're in now, where heat pumps are really starting to become the, the, the main technology for heating new buildings, as well as retrofitting um, older buildings, there's going to be a huge amount of new entrants coming into the market. And a lot of technology will come from China, it'll come from Japan, it'll come from Korea, it'll come from all over the world. And what's critical is that actually product manufactured in Europe for Europe is it's, it's developed, manufactured R&D for our region and manufactured within our region to our specification standards, our EN standards and so on. So we have our flagship factory is based in Ostend in Belgium. Uh, we have another factory in the Czech Republic. We have a factory in Germany, we have a factory in Turkey, and we have a new factory planned in Poland, which will open in 2024, and that is going to be dedicated specifically for heating products. So there's huge, huge growth um, anticipated and being planned for within Daikin at the moment. So in Ireland, we have representation in Ireland, which is, um, again, an important thing when you're importing product into the country that it is serviced and supported with the team within Ireland. So we have a product manager here that basically would um, concentrate on all the technical aspects of the products, new product launches, implementing new products into the Irish market. We have an in-house engineering team of seven. We have a sales support team of five, uh, external sales team of six people dedicated to heating products only. Our FQS team, which are the, the service guys that um, look after commissioning, service and warranty. We have two of those that cover the country and we're continually recruiting for service, sales and engineering staff. And in the last six months, we have completed our showroom in our building in City West, which is a really nice, um, I suppose it showcases all our product, but it also is a training facility where we, we've been carrying out kind of two training sessions a week for the last two months since it, since it was finished. So I'll, I'll show you some images of that as we go along. So one thing that is unique, or unique to Daikin, I should say, is that we manufacture both the refrigerant and the compressor. This is 100% unique to air conditioning and air to water heat pump manufacturers. And it means that we can stand over our compressors with total peace of mind. So to get on to air to water heat pump applications, the way that I look at it is we're, we're separating them out into two categories. So we have new build and we have retrofit. And to, up to now, the new build heat pump sales is driven by compliance with building regulations, compliance with NZ buildings, and with the renewable contribution that's required for new build. Retrofit is a whole new ballgame. 
this is whereby the government's climate action plan has a target to retrofit 400,000 heat pumps by 2030 and these must be fitted into existing dwellings to replace old less efficient um, fossil fuel boilers. So new build applications. Building a new house, you're driven by compliance. As I said, your new house is going to be airtight. It's going to be highly insulated. It's going to have more than likely mechanical ventilation. Um, you only need low temperature to provide the heat in this building. So that is a very happy marriage between a heat pump and the new type of buildings that we've been building in Ireland since 2019. The heating systems are designed and sized for heat pumps. So you're looking at, you know, your radiator has been sized for a lower temperature or indeed aluminium low temperature radiators or underfloor heating, which of course is always a low temperature heating system, ideal for, um, for use with air to water heat pumps. One of the big things that we don't think of very often is the air quality around our homes. And when you have an oil or gas boiler, you have combustion of, of, of fossil fuels, apologies. And you may also have a solid fuel um, stove in your house. And all of this burning of fuel, uh, it, it compromises the air quality around your home. So when you have an air to water heat pump, you have no concern about your air quality. You have one energy bill, which of course is a really um, a good way of managing your household bills. And you also have a highly efficient heating system. Um, you know, you're getting an efficiency of between four and 500% as opposed to an efficiency of at best 97% from uh, an oil or gas boiler. So for retrofit then, it's a little bit more complex because you're dealing with an existing building that has been built prior to the current building regulations. And in that regard, it's definitely recommended that you consider making your home more energy efficient before you install a heat pump. And this is very much the guidelines coming from um, SCAI, Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. So their recommendation is if you want to put a heat pump into your existing home that you should firstly carry out a technical assessment. And this is a survey on the fabric of the building. So it's going to look at the insulation, the quality of the windows and um, the amount of, of leakage of heat out of the building or air changes within the building. And they will provide a comprehensive report to say OK, your house was built in the 1970s. You need to upgrade your either your attic insulation or maybe you need to put in um, invest in external insulation, upgrade your windows, make your house a lot more airtight than it, it would have been, which will make your house more comfortable to live in and also reduce your heating bills, regardless of what your heat source is. So it's a really good investment in, in your quality of life when you're at home, in increasing the value of your home and decreasing the cost of your energy bills. So when you're looking at doing this retrofit, you also need to look at the existing heating system. Of course, it's not as straightforward now as a new build where everything is starting from scratch and you're designing this heating system around a heat pump now you're designing your heat pump says your heat pump around what's existing in the house and in that regard you may have to upgrade some of your radiators change some pipe work and change um, your heating controls as well and to do all this SAI are providing grants so if your house is um, fairly well insulated, it's up around a B2 level, you will qualify straight away for a heat pump grant. If it's lower than a B2, more than likely you're going to have to carry out additional upgrade measures. And you can have a look at the SEAI website and find out what the contributions are. The six and a half thousand euros towards fitting a heat pump, but you may have to carry out additional upgrades before you qualify for that heat pump grant. And you'll also qualify for, you know, external insulation, attic insulation, um, dry lining is another one on, on the insulation ones. So, you know, you, you can look at what updates are needed in your home and you can make a plan. Maybe this year you do your insulation and maybe next year you do your heat pump. So it's, 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 it's your retrofit journey, um, so to speak. The other option you have if your house is very old and you're, you have a lot of upgrades to do, you can look at a deep retrofit and to do this, SEAI have a list of registered one-stop shops that will carry out the complete, um, the complete upgrade. They'll manage all the trades. They will 
manage all of the funding. So they'll apply for all the funding and you will only have to pay the net balance once all of the works are complete. So it's another good option if you're doing a, a big energy upgrade on your home. So just moving on to look at the different types of technology that we offer in Daikin. There's two main types of air to water heat pumps. You have a monoblock and you have a split. So with the monoblock, the whole idea is that all of the components of the heat pump system are in the outdoor unit. So you, you're using very little space inside for this type of heat pump system. It's a water-based system. So you're bringing a, a one inch connection into the house. It's split with a three port valve before it gets to the hot water cylinder. And that just means that the heat pump is going to divert between heating and hot water. So it'll never be, it'll never be providing heating and hot water at the same time. All of these systems are designed on a priority hot water, um, I suppose, system design. So if there's a call for hot water, the, the heat pump will go into hot water mode. It'll stop doing heating. Once the hot water requirement is satisfied, it'll go back to heating until heating is satisfied. So the monoblock range, it starts at a four kilowatt, which is for a small building, all the way up to 16 kilowatt. You can see two different images there um, of outdoor units. So the, the smaller white one is the smaller class four, six and eight kilowatt. The one with the black grill is nine, 11, 14 and 16. This, this is a new product that was launched. Both of them are actually, they're, they both have OR32 refrigerant, both launched in the last year. And the, the higher classification ones would ordinarily have been a double fan unit. They've been redesigned now into a single fan unit. So they fit under a window, which makes it quite convenient for locating the outdoor unit and, and keeping it close to the house as well. So the benefits of your monoblock you're not taking up any space inside. All you have inside really is your hot water cylinder and your hot press or your utility room. You have water only connection between the indoor and the outdoor unit. And all of, all of our heat pumps come with a built-in three kilowatt backup heater. And that's there as purely as a backup. It, it assists when the heat pumps are initially being commissioned. So this time of the year specifically, if you're turning on a heat pump for the first time, you need the, the water in the system must be above, I think it's 12 degrees. So the compressor will not run until the temperature, the water temperature flowing around in the system is above 12 degrees. And the backup heater assists in allowing that to um, come up to temperature rather than waiting. Sorry, I'm having a bit of an error here. Rather than waiting for, um, w w you know, because obviously the water in the temperature this time of the year is very cold. Sorry. There's a bit of an exception happening here. So that's the monoblocks. They're, they're ideal for um, retrofit scenarios because you're not having to fit in any unusual size indoor unit in a space that you don't have available. So one thing to note about all of our heat pumps, they operate down to minus 25 degrees and all of these ranges will give you a leaving water temperature of 65 degrees. So there's plenty of scope in between for um, fluctuations in your flow temperature. Refrigerant splits. So this is the alternative to a monoblock. You can see that the outdoor unit is, is more compact and that's because your hydraulic components and your, your PCB boards, your um, backup heater, heat exchanger are all built in to the indoor unit. So when you look over here at this tall indoor unit with the, the black um, control panel on the front, this is what we call an integrated indoor unit. It houses your domestic hot water storage. So you can have 180 liters or 230 liters of hot water storage. This smaller unit beside it, which looks like a gas boiler is a wall hung version. So this wall hung um, unit, it houses all the hydraulic components, heat exchanger, backup heater, et cetera, and allows you to put a separate cylinder in a different location. And again, this is just giving you different options for how you manage the location of your indoor units. Refrigerant splits generally uh, give you the best efficiency. Um, they give you a higher efficiency over a monoblock, generally speaking. And they also allow you to have a longer distance between the indoor and the outdoor unit. So it allows you to have about 30 meters of a pipe run between the indoor and the outdoor, whereas the monoblock, you're really restricted to about 10 to 12 meters. So that's the refrigerant split. 
Um, the indoor units, as I said, you have your floor standing indoor unit. The beauty of this one is the, it has the, the same footprint as any white good, so it's 600 by 600. These are generally located in, in certainly in new build applications, they will be in the utility room and they fit very nicely in with, with the rest of the white goods in, in that room. Um, they're available in a heating only model or a heating and cooling model. Which is which is handy. If you, I mean, cooling is beginning to come and become an issue for us here in Ireland because houses are so well insulated. So, if you want to incorporate cooling as part of your overall heating system, um, we supply a reversible unit which allows you to do cooling as part of the the same system. Your wall hung unit, as I said earlier, it just allows you to have a separate cylinder in a separate location, and it can be a, a very convenient um, system to to be able to use when you can't fit the floor standing unit in one location. The final um, model that I want to show you is our high temperature split. So this will provide up to 70 degrees in leaving water temperature and operates very, very efficiently in very low outdoor temperatures. And the reason for that is it was specifically designed for the requirements in the Nordic countries where they regularly do have very low outdoor temperatures. Um, and one of the other design criteria was that this would operate with very, very low outdoor um, sound, sound levels of the outdoor unit, sorry. So you can see that the sound levels there are 35 decibels, which would be considered extremely low um, for heat pumps generally. Um, the reason that that's important is in Nordic regions where you have very densely populated areas, heat pumps would be probably the most common heat source. And at nighttime, there's actually restrictions on noise levels of outdoor units. So for that reason, the noise levels of this unit was very much a part of the design. So we don't have a huge market for high temperatures uh, heat pump in Ireland because when we're looking at retrofit, we're generally upgrading our buildings to make them more energy efficient and therefore our low temperature heat pump range is actually suitable to match the building. So the high temperature it's only used in very specific circumstances. If you had maybe a period house where you have old cast iron radiators that can't be replaced, or you just want to keep them, by taking out the boiler and putting in this high temperature split, you're getting a like for like system where you can still run those radiators at the same high temperature. So from that point of view, it's a really good solution. It comes with the same um, indoor units. Again, the integrated indoor unit and the wall hung. So it allows you to locate your indoor units in whatever um, combination suits best. One other solution that's quite interesting, we're, we're selling quite a lot of these systems at the moment, it's an air to air heat pump. So this would be traditionally kind of known as an air conditioning system. When you go on holidays to Spain and you see the, the, the air conditioning unit inside in the apartment, that's actually a unit that can also do heating. and they're starting to be used a lot more for heating. So they can do heating and cooling, obviously not at the same time, but the same, the same system can do heating and cooling. And they're ideal as a replacement for storage heaters. And we supply a lot of these into social housing units when they're doing energy upgrades, they're taking out storage heating and air to air is a much more um, easy integration when you've never had a wet system in the building. So instead of putting in pipe work for radiators or digging up floors for underfloor heating, this is a much, much handier system. So you can have three up to, well, you can have up to five indoor units with one outdoor unit. Or when you look at the, the next slide here, we can actually combine a hot water cylinder with these indoor units. So when you combine the hot water cylinder, you can only have three um, indoor heating and cooling units. But when you put this whole system together, you now have a highly efficient heating, cooling and domestic hot water system that's very easy to install into an existing building where there has never been a wet system. Um, they're also been used actually in new build apartments and the likes of, we'll say, small holiday homes, or if you were putting maybe um, like a small like a cabin or an outdoor room as a home office or something like that. This is an absolutely ideal solution. 
So that's the technology part of it. Just to go through some pointers on how you should run your heating system. So in most heating systems, certainly in, in new build applications, you're going to have room thermostats or you're going to have TRVs on your radiators. And these are used to set the desired room temperature. And those desired room temperatures for living areas, you're looking at 19 or 20 degrees and for bedrooms, 17 to 18 degrees. It's important to say that by reducing the temperature on your thermostat by one to two degrees will improve the efficiency of your heating system. And I know that's something that's everybody everybody's concerned about at the moment with the increase in energy costs. So once your heat pump is commissioned, you shouldn't really need to make any adjustments to the, the settings on the heat pump. So if your heat pump is commissioned by, by a commissioning engineer, they will go in and they're going to set up what we call a weather compensation curve. And this is by far the most efficient way to run your heating system. A weather compensation curve takes the outdoor temperature into consideration when it's given the flow temperature into your radiators or underfloor heating. And it can fluctuate by plus or minus five degrees in most cases. So today it's cold outside, it's going to be putting a higher flow temperature into your heating system than it was last week when it was, say, 16 degrees outside. So it, it, it gives that fluctuation and it means that the heat pump is always matching the flow temperature in the building to what the actual outdoor temperature is. So you've got a really nice um, synergy going on there. So the most efficient way then to manage your room temperature is to set your room stat or your TRVs to say for nine, your, your, your living spaces, set it at 19 degrees or 20 degrees and allow the heat pump to maintain that temperature. So it is a kind of a foreign concept to anybody who's used to running an oil boiler because the norm would be to turn it on and turn it off as quick as you can so that you don't use too much oil. But with heat pumps, actually, you want the heat pump to, to run and not to be doing really hard work all the time. And to do that, you maintain the temperature. And even though it seems like a crazy thing, thing to do, it actually is the most efficient way to, to run your heating system. Just let it maintain the temperature and you'll have constant comfort in your house. You're not gonna have fluctuations in, you know, the, the house is hot, the house is cold. You're gonna have a continuous stable temperature and a really comfortable living environment. And that's that's a really, really nice thing to experience. I've just renovated a property myself and put in a heat pump and I can, I can absolutely stand over this as a really good way of managing your heating system and for the efficiency of it as well. So just two other um, important factors. It's really important that you don't turn off the power to your heat pump because your heat pump has programs built in to manage it and certainly to protect the compressor. So when there's very cold temperatures outside, you're gonna see a lot of water running off the heat pump. And during times of high humidity, you're gonna see a lot of water running off the heat pump. And it's important that that, heat, that water can flow easily away, that it doesn't sit underneath the heat pump and start to freeze back up into the heat pump. If anything like that starts to happen, the heat pump has its own program built in, electronic functions to protect the compressor. and provided that there's always power to the compressor, it's always going to protect itself. And then the other important point is that you keep the outdoor unit clear at all times. You don't put um, a trellis and some nice trailing shrubs up around the heat pump to cover it because you don't like the look of it. Unfortunately, these are a part of our lives now. We have to keep them clear. We have to allow for the water, or sorry, the air to circulate freely around. So the, the heat pump, pulls in the air at the back of the heat pump and it extracts it out the front. And you must have a clearance of at least a meter of a, a meter and a half in front of the unit at all times, because otherwise the air that's extracted from the heat pump is going to recirculate back into the heat pump and you're not going to have any energy to strip off of that air. You're just going to have cold air recirculating, recirculating. Your heat pump is going to go out in a fault and it's not going to be efficient and you're going to have problems. So really important. There's constant power and there is the, the heat pump is kept, it's kept clear and there isn't any um, restrictions around it. Domestic hot water production is fully managed by the heat pump schedule. So it will allow you to set your schedule for, you know, morning and evening, or you can use um, a reheat function. This allows the tank 
to drop by 10 degrees and then reheat to the set temperature of the tank. You can use both functions together so you never run out of hot water. The ideal tank temperature for efficiency is 48 degrees and there is a disinfection function that's factory set for once a week. It'll heat the tank up to 60 degrees and hold it there for 10 minutes. That's an anti-Legionella function. And on the Daikin heat pump, the, the black panel on the front, we call it uh, the Daikin Eye. It is the controller of the heat pump and it will show you if there's a fault on the heat pump, um, the Daikin Eye will be red when it's in um, normal working functioning mode, it will be in blue. So just images, I'm looking at the time ticking down here, so I'm starting to speed up. Um, some images of how the outdoor unit should be installed and you can see there it sits on the rubber feet they're anti-vibration feet so that uh, the vibrations are not going to damage anything internally in the heat pump you've got some uh, a, a drain underneath the heat pump so that the water can drain away from the heat pump when it starts to run off and then you can see the really nice integrated indoor unit it just fits in to a cupboard and it's it's taken up the same footprint as the the tumble dryer next door to it um, another image here, what I'd point out here is the pea gravel around the uh, base of the heat pump. That's a really good way of having drainage of the water away, freely draining away from the heat pump, which is a really good way to do it. And this shows the integrated, um, or sorry, the wall hung indoor unit with a separate cylinder and um, nice, neat pipework around that. So a case study here from a deep retrofit um, project. This was originally a D1. Um, BER rating. It's a 1970s built house. They Their upgrades were external wall insulation, triple glaze windows, a composite front door, demand control ventilation, and a Daikin heat pump. And they went from a D1 to an A3, and their running cost of the heat pump is approximately 1,200 euros. This is another a similar one again, actually, 1970s house, 1,200 square foot house. Um, there was a gas boiler and a gas fire. It had a BR rating of E2. And with the upgrades that they carried out, again, it was external insulation, new windows and doors, um, attic insulation, Daikin heat pump. They've brought that building up to a B1 and their monthly electricity usage for all of their heating and all of their electricity use and domestic hot water is about 98 euros a month. And that was for January and February. So high, high levels of heat required. This is just giving you an idea of what our training center looks like in Dublin. Um, we have the training classroom and we also have all of our heat pump models on show. You're welcome to come and sign up for training if you wish. Um, training at daikin.ie is our, is our training email. And as I said, we've working models. We we're doing training there a couple of times a week. So please put your name down if it's something you'd like to do. And any questions? I, we're, we're, it looks like we're running out of time here. So I'll um, hand over to you, Stephen, for, for any questions. That's perfect. Thanks, thanks Stephen, for- Sorry, I feel like I was good. racing towards the end. That's <laughs> okay, it's okay. We have some pretty good questions going in here now for you. Okay. Um, I'll stop sharing here. To, so we have yeah. one from Kieran says, um, oh, sorry, it's actually moving there for me. Do you arrange full installation, including all plumbing and wiring? And in older houses, do you need to have a, a wiring upgrade or a special MCB installation? Yeah, that's a really good question, actually. So first of all, we are the manufacturer, so we do not install. We would have a network of installers around the country. And if you check our website, um, it's currently been, the map has been updated, but our, our suppliers and our um, installers are listed on a map. And if you go into, I think there is a section, if you go to the supplier list, you'll see all the places where you can, where you can buy our products. In relation to upgrading your connection, the answer to that is it needs to be checked because in older buildings, quite often, the, the supply into the building won't be, won't be good enough for a heat pump. So that is something that needs to be checked. A 12 kVA line will, will suit um, all of our single phase um, products. So you just you do need to check that. MCBs most definitely will have to be upgraded as well. Perfect. Um, another one here is, uh, is there just one information badge on top to split unit? Sometimes it can be covered by the built-in kitchen. Is there a badge inside mm -hmm. for BR purposes? 
Uh, no, there isn't actually. The badge is on the top of the unit. Another very good point. Um, and actually, in the in the image that I showed, you probably would. One thing that actually we do recommend is if it's if it if if it is being built into a unit that there is a shelf left on top that can be removed because if you need to service the heat pump, you have to be able to get into you have to be able to take the the top off and the front um, control panel off. But that is where the information badge is. Um, but if you ever need any information, feel free to contact us because we have everything on file and we can send it to you in five minutes. So if you ever need anything, just give us a shout. Right. Now we're, we're running low on we're time. Getting close. We're getting close, we're getting close, yeah. <laughs> There's a, one more question, so like, would there be a difference in efficiency between the high temperature and low temperature units? And it says in a standard timber frame house built around 2000, so I'm guessing. Well, yes, of course, because if you're like the whole idea with heat pumps is you want to run them at low temperature and that's where you get your efficiency from. Now, the high temperature units, like they're a brilliant solution because it's allowing you to get rid of fossil fuels. It's allowing you to have a heat pump system. It's allowing you to have an efficiency of maybe, you know, 275 percent instead of maybe 400%. So the efficiency is lower. Um, as I said, those particular high temperature units, they operate really, really highly efficiency, highly efficient at very low outdoor temperatures. But that's not our market. That's not our, um, our need as such. So some of the low temperatures still will give you 65 degrees and they're, they probably are better suited to our climate. But the efficiency, yes, the efficiency of low temperature is higher than the efficiency of high temperature for sure. Yeah. Perfect. With that, um, I'd like to thank April for a nice, <laughs> nice quick presentation. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. We'll be kicking off next week um, with more uh, Heat Pump Association members. Um, we'll be running through their products and their control settings too. So thanks, everyone, and have thanks a good so. day. Thanks, thanks guys, and thanks for, thanks for joining. Take care.